Hello, 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 friends. This is Melissa and Crafty Max. Hello again, it's me. Well, friends, this is step 10 of the 10 steps on how to make a deco poly mesh wreath. Now, this is how to attach your hanger and how to put your placemat on the back of the wreath if you choose to do that the way I do. Now, when I make a wreath, I like to use my one and a half inch ribbon that I used on my wreath. So, but you can, oh, you can always use something different if you want. It's totally up to you, but I'm going to use this. That's my one and a half inch ribbon. So what I usually do, I take, let me bring you down here real quick so I can show you how I'm cutting my ribbon here. I usually take maybe about, you really don't need this much, but I like to have a little extra so I can really tighten it really good. You can take about 20 inches. Take about 20 inches of that, because you know, you don't want to waste uh, your beautiful ribbons, right? So let me go ahead and just put a little pin on that. Now find the center of your sign. Okay, I know this pumpkin is the center of my sign. So, and I'm all eyeballing it pretty good and I hope you can do the same. But I just kind of reach underneath and wrap it around the back on that wreath form. Okay, and I'm gonna show you here. Now you can attach your hanger uh, after you attach your sign, before you put any of your ribbons on. That is perfectly okay. When I'm doing my tutorials live, I usually wait and do it afterwards, but really, if you want to, you can always attach it after you attach your sign. That's probably a good rule of thumb. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over. Now flip it over gently, because you know, you, you got your ribbons on there, but you can always fluff them back out. Now all I do is tie it once, and then bring that knot See this knot right here? Bring that knot to that wire form and bring up the hanger. See that? Now I wrap those ribbon tails around that form on each side of that knot. All right, each side of the knot. All right, here we go. Now there's the hanger, see that? And I kind of lift it up one more time, make sure it didn't shift on me and that shifted just a little bit. That is just about perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and double knot this. Double knot it. And then I kind of cut off the little ribbon there. Because you know I like everything to be nice and neat. I'm going to check one more time. Yep, that looks pretty darn good. Now you can also hit that with just a little bit of hot glue. Just so that that's not going to shift on that wreath form sometimes that will do that. So that, my friends, is how you attach your hanger to the back of your wreath. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how I do my placemat. So let's bring this over here. Let's bring the placemat. Now I'm going to use a green, lime green placemat. I like to use eight ties and it doesn't really matter what color they are. You can use only four if you want, but I really like using eight. I, I don't know why I've always done that. I just, I think I like the look of it better. And you don't need to be seeing me. Let me bring you over just a little bit. Here we go. Put one up here. So you have two on each opposite sides of each other. Now I'm coming up to the top. Kind of eyeballing how even it is. It doesn't have to be exact. Bring it up to the top, do the same thing. So we have four, now you can leave it like that, but I'm gonna go ahead and add four more. Add four more, right in between those other two ties. See here, I'm just gonna eyeball the center. All right, and this one. And there is pleats, let me show you. In the placemats that I use, they're pleated. So I actually put that zip tie right between those two pleats there up at the top. All right, now, let me bring you over here. Let me bring you over here. And I'll hang up my wreath <clears throat> so that you can attach the placemat. Okay. Hang this up. There we go. Well, there's that cute, 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 <laughs> cute wreath. Now let's bring it around this 
this way so we can get to the back. Now I'm just using the easel. Uh, it's just easier for me to do it that way that I have attached to my work table there. Now I place the placement on the back. And I wrap it around that wire frame up at the top. I usually do it to the right of the hanger that we just attached. And I don't tighten it completely. I leave it a little bit loose, all right? And then I go opposite. So I do the top. I'm going to do the bottom one. Okay, let's do the bottom one. There we go. Then I'm going to do each side, kind of even like the way I do my punch my holes in my signs, top, bottom, left to right on the sides. And then I'm going to do the other opposite ends. See, I'm doing this one up here. And I'm not cranking them down yet. I'm leaving them a little loose so I can shift that placemat if I need to. I'm going to go over here, do the opposite. Now this is a 15 inch round placemat, which is what I usually use on all of my uh, wreaths, because my wreaths are always usually pretty big. This one actually looks to be a little bit bigger, and but it's perfectly okay. Now I'm going to make them tighter. I'm going to go and crank them. Okay, see that? Crank it, crank it. And now what I'm going to do, is take my vice grips and I'm just going to snip off those uh, zip ties. Because you don't want that hanging out there, do you? That. That. This one. And that one. And another thing that is really important is that the pointy ends that you just snipped are really sharp and they can actually scratch a door. So you want to take those and just push them to the inside of that wreath. See how sharp that looks? Just push it in. You may have to move the mesh out of the way. Move that one. You just push them in. You may have to hold the placement too when you push it in there, which is okay. There you go. Let's do this one. but not least this one up here. Now, let me just show you what this looks like. Let me bring you over just a little. Bring you over just a little. So here is the completed wreath. <laughs> and look at it, friends. Isn't that just so pretty? Now, you may have to move your poofs out a little bit that you can adjust those as you go, right? But isn't that pretty, friends? Look how gorgeous that is. So now, this completes the 10 steps on how to make a poly deco poly mesh wreath. Uh, 10 step deco poly mesh wreath. <laughs> so easy now, uh, it's easy for me to say that's just, you know, BFF there, guys. All right, y'all have a blessed, blessed day, and I hope this helps you tremendously. And I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.